Hi Fannies, I hope you've had a great week and have enjoyed the activities that I put out for you. It's okay if you didn't get around to doing them. I know lives are very, very busy and a little bit different at the moment. So all good, as long as you're all having fun, staying safe and being good brownies. That's all I care about, really. So this week, challenge is three, three letters, K, L and M. Yeah. Let's do it. K is for Keepy Uppy Challenge. Yes, I can hear some of you. You're like, yes, I love Keepy Uppies on football. Don't have to do it with football. Aim of the game is to see how many Keepy Uppies you can do either on your knee or with a button ball. So you can have your ball bounce going to a tennis racket. I have no ability to do anything with my knee or my foot. So I'd be almost better off doing a tennis racket, but I don't really know. So how many of those can you do without dropping the ball? Keep going. Have a competition with someone in your your friends, your family, someone over the internet. You can do this on Skype or Zoom with a friend at the other end if you've got your camera set up nicely. Um, challenge someone. Always more fun for you a lot when you're being competitive. So, you know, why not? You can do it on the end of your hockey stick, those who play hockey. My sister used to be able to do a few with her hockey ball on a hockey stick. I do not know how. She's more sporty than I. Keep you up a challenge. If you find that all far too easy because you're really, really, really good at keep you up is see how long you can keep it up. So can you last a minute? Can you last two minutes? Can you last five minutes? Can you last ten hours? Please don't last ten hours. So it's really not. So that's it, keep you up a challenge. How many can you do? Tell me how many you've done. Show off. So the next one is one of the girl guiding cards, and it's this one. This is called L is for Local Munch. So this is quite a cool one. Um, with this, you're going to find out all about food miles. So um, food miles is how far your food has had to travel from where it was grown or made to your house. Now, some foods we get from all around the world. Some foods we get from Kent, which is only a few miles down the road from us, really. So Basically, the greater the distance food travels, the bigger the impact on the environment. So this is an activity about the environment. Um, and this is because the pollution caused by planes and lorries to transport it can be quite big. And the idea is that if we, where we can and where possible, we buy food that was grown in this country or like just over in France, because France is far, we're kind of very, countries are very close to us, okay? So for this activity, what I want you to do is take some food from the cupboards. Ask your parents before you raise the food cupboards, please. Um, take some foods, take four or five, that's all you need. Then um, have a look at where it says. So usually on something, I'll say country of origin. Then I need you to look at a map and find where that country of origin is. If you've got a world map, that's great. If you haven't, you can look at one on the internet, there's loads. Now, you can, if you've got this in hard copy, you can draw a line from where the food's come from to London. And the longer the line, the greater the food mileage. So if I'm getting fruit from South Africa, it um, is going to take more food miles than if I get food from Germany, because that's a short line. But I want you to see what lines you've got and see how far all this food has come. Then your next activity is to work out what those food miles are. Now, there are some calculators online, or you can literally just put into Google, get someone to put into Google for you, how far is it from Berlin to London, for instance, if your food is from Berlin. And that will tell you how far it's um, travelled. And this is really interesting. It's nice to know. And then think when you end up helping with the food shop or anything like that, have a question yourself and say, do I want this or do I want this food that has come from closer by? Or do we want to go shopping somewhere else or like to a farmer's market? Talk to your parents, have a conversation about if this is an environmental thing that you think would be good for your family to do and you can do it and your parents are really up for it, try it. But it's just an interesting thing to do. 
um, and I think you'll find it quite fun if you're into kind of your environment stuff and think about where we can go next after you've gone plastic free because we've done a lot of plastic free so how about taking it to the next level and seeing also have a look how much food is coming in plastic because usually the further the food has come the more plastic it's got because it's had to go in the freezer that's what I think how about you see how it's packaged how much plastic how much recycled materials are we getting on food extra level also goes towards your zero waste badge that's just kind of now my final mission for you ladies this week should you choose to accept it is n is for medicine not taking not learning about medicine i think and i think you'll know that um you don't read much or i certainly didn't when i was your age about female medics and by medics, I mean doctors, I mean nurses, I mean surgeons. So your activity for the week is to go away and research a female medic. They could be dead, they could be alive. Is there one in our local hospital, your local hospital? Find out about them, see if you can find why they went into medicine and some of their achievements. So I will draw a line here. We all know about Florence Nightingale. She's great. She was a pioneer. She was amazing. We might possibly know quite a bit about Marie Curie. So how about finding something, some female who has made a contribution to the medical field, be that through research or nursing or being a doctor or surgeon? Who was the first surgeon? I actually don't know. I think you've probably got these in your books. So that should keep you busy for the rest of the day. Um, hope you enjoy that and enjoy the sunshine i've put my fleece on to make this video it is 27 degrees in my flat so i'm now going to go and take my fleece off and have a nice cool drink remember to hydrate girls i'm not here with you to tell you to drink water repeatedly and i'm missing that this summer so please remember to keep hydrated because if you don't keep hydrated as we learn in first aid you will faint or you won't feel very well at all and we don't want that happening because it's horrible. Dehydration sickness is the worst. So remember when you're out playing, when you're in the house, even remember to hydrate. Okay, take care, have a great week. See you soon, bye.